Hi guys, it's Rick Shields and I'm down here at Quest Golf Academy with Dan Whitaker. I'm joined by the man who's going to help us become more consistent. Um, we've come up with three very simple ideas to help you become a very consistent golfer. Yeah. I'm going to let Dan run the show on this. What, what are the best bits of advice, Dan? Okay, well, becoming consistent, okay, take out uh, all the bits in terms of your moving parts in your golf swing, okay? The three most simple bits are going to be setup, balance, which is obviously linked to setup, but swinging in balance and finishing in balance, and then your tempo, okay? So they're all linked together. Now, what we're going to do is cover each one and explain how we can help you with your game with it. Now, setup is absolutely massive for everybody, okay? Going back to Rick's first lesson, where we saw that you were a bit on your toes and changing that, that's made a huge difference to your game. Big time. Okay, so what we want to do is, in terms of setup position... Maybe, maybe don't use me as, as a model, because everyone's seen me play. Now, <laughs> use other students that you okay. <laughs> I'm joking. But yeah, consistency is, is setup is really key. It is vital, isn't it? Really key. Okay, so what we're looking at is making sure that the... From here, try and get your hands kind of hanging down from your chin, okay? You don't want to have them too far away from you because that's going to put your weight onto your toes. Or if you're too close in here, you tend to either sit in your heels or make your arms go away from your body during that first move. That tips your weight onto your toes. So this is straight away going to affect the balance in your swing, but really affect being able to turn properly in that backswing or, and into the follow through. Just do, you, do, do that arm position again for me, Dan. And this is good to know that we've actually got some actual parameters on this. We're trying to get arms hung naturally from the shoulder socket, directly under the chin, under the shoulders, just a little bit, things like that just massively help remembering where, how far away from the golf ball you Absolutely. stand as well. Continue. That was good. So uh, the other one I think that's really good is that you can, if you video yourself, you can do this obviously in all of the software on phones and tablets. Draw a line down from your chin, straight down. It wants to be towards the front of your right hand. So obviously if, you're, if it's missing your hand this way, you're too, your hands are too close. If it's hitting your left hand, your hands are too far away. So it gives you another reference point and you can use this on the cameras. Perfect. One more bit that we'd look at is, is in terms of weight distribution across your feet, okay? We want to make sure that when we're turning back in the golf swing, in the back swing, we want to make sure that the weight's going in towards the right heel. Well, if you've got your weight too much in your heel to start with, generally you'll move forwards onto your toes to try and get yourself back in balance. And the other way would be, if you've got too much on your toes, it's very difficult to actually turn backwards and stay in posture. So a great way to do it is, feel like you can like waggle your toes or even lift them up slightly inside your shoes. If I'm too far away from the ball and I lift them up, I feel lots of tension down the front of my shins and I feel it's really difficult to reach the ball. To get myself into my correct position here where the hands are hanging down, lift my toes up, that feels like a pretty good distance from the ball, soften them down and then that's going to really help you start off in a very athletic position which is going to make a massive difference being able to turn. Very simple principles there. We're not talking loads of different like spine angles or tilt and, then, and things like that. It's sometimes the simple ideas are the ones that you've actually missed to stop you become consistent. So things like that are absolutely key. Is that yeah. most of the things in setup? Are you happy with that? Or is yeah. That, the, yeah, that's that. it. Okay. So next, what are we, what, after you've got that much more athletic setup, how would then we become even more consistent? Okay. So then every top player that's been measured on force plates and uh, in 3D is moving weight into their right heel in the backswing, okay? So they're turning their hips, okay? I see 85, 90% of people, when I first see them, weight's going towards the toes, okay? The problem is your arm position, so your arm height at the top here, is either going to be too high or too low. It's just going to be all over the place, and your balance is going to be so badly affected. So if I'm on my toes here, I'm so far forwards, this could cause an over the top or an early extension when I back out to try and get the golf club to attack from that inside. So now all of a sudden I've got to do something dramatic with my hands at the bottom in order to be able to square that golf club consistently. And sometimes dramatic movements can hit good golf shots. Yeah. But it's not consistent. No. Not even close because mm. you're relying on a strong characteristic in your swing to fix another characteristic. Yeah. And that just doesn't work. So recommendations going back then the swing, 
we're talking about more balance and turning the weight more into the right heel. Yes. And so it, you should almost feel it moving into that right foot as you go back. Absolutely. Okay. So, so, it's, so it's like it's almost sitting back very slightly in that, you know, in the right bum cheek going downwards. And any ways, of, any ways of measuring that? Is that quite difficult to measure unless you're on force plates or is there any ways? I, I like to, you know, in terms of practice, for someone who's always going onto their toes, I like them to actually hit balls with the right toes slightly up in the air. Okay. So then they get into that right heel, it guarantees it, because if that starts to go back down on the floor, That's a good way. then we know that they're starting to tilt back forwards again. So actually setting up with the toes up off the floor and swinging. Now I feel already that my weight's moved into my right heel very clearly. Exactly that, yeah. I know my, my weight's not gone into my right toe whatsoever. Yes. Okay, cool, perfect. And then that's balance. So we've got setup, balance, and what would you say is the next big thing to get consistent? Okay, is then the last bit's gonna be then getting your tempo. Okay, and I believe that tempo is very much, can be found in the follow through position. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. By whether you're finishing in balance. Yes, oh, 100%. Will, will also go along with how good your tempo has been. 100%. Because okay. if, I mean, you look at some of the top players, Ernie Els always gets thrown about when we talk yeah. about tempo and balance. And he is Mr. Consistent. Yeah. Isn't he? Yeah. Even someone like Colin Montgomery. Yeah. You know, you look at one of the most consistent golfers that's probably ever walked the planet. He is always very controlled and balanced after the Absolutely. shot. Absolutely. Flowing, you would almost describe yes. him as. Someone less consistent, Phil Mickelson. Yeah. Tiger Woods even. Yeah, and those guys are very often almost finishing kind of back there and then fighting the golf club and their body a little bit at the end of that follow through. 100%. So tempo is, is very different player to player. There's been many successful tempos through the lifetime of golf, but it's trying to find a tempo that you can swing within balance and repeat time and time again. Have you got any advice on on moving how to fix tempo, any ideas around tempo? The one thing I really dislike for tempo is the idea of swinging two golf clubs. Okay. Okay, I think swinging two golf clubs is really poor because actually it's gonna slow down your action. It's gonna slow down the firing of the sequence of your body. Yeah. And it's been proven that that's not good. Okay, the oldest one I've seen, and I still quite like it for people who are so off, is holding the club head and swinging the grip. Now I'm not being funny though, Dan. No one's going to be able to hit it this way. <laughs> I, thought we were, I thought we were trying to help players. <laughs> Come on, what do we do with this way? So this way, because it's so light, if you end up swinging it really, really quick for your own rhythm, okay, it's going to feel so awkward because obviously there's no weight on the end of it. So if it's really kind of quick, it's like all snatchy like that. Yeah. It just felt horrendous. You have, have to control time. it. You have to very much control it. So to give you just a feeling, because tempo is so individual from player to player, as Rick was just saying, that this has got to be something that you can get a feeling of your own individual tempo. So if we're doing it this way, you can at least get the feeling then of turning back, getting through, trying to make sure then that you feel finish with the weight in your left heel, balanced at the end yeah and then being able to look up and have you know poise at the end of that golf shot i mean rory mcelroy has got a fast tempo versus ernie Els, but he always finishes an amazing balance Unbelievable and his tempo balance. is sensational yeah and, and one, of, one of the things i would say is that if you like a player's tempo emulate it you know yeah. a, a link a lot of players would love to you know, have that picture of McElroy in their head when they're swinging yeah and think about after you've hit the shot do you look like Rory McElroy have you maintained your balance like Rory McElroy did or Ernie Els or whoever is your tempo role model yes and we'll all have different ones yeah you know some players will like that that kind of fiery snappy swing yeah some others won't well a great thing I heard from uh, Ernie Els say many years ago in his video was that for a slower tempo swing, like his, he likes to count one, two at the top, and then three into the follow through. Where he says someone with a quicker rhythm, more like say a Nick Price back in the day, it would be one, two. Yeah. And then they'd hit balls like this on the practice ground. So that would be then, then being able to get the feeling on a count of what suited them. Perfect. Are we gonna hit any shots? Well, I've been itching, absolutely itching. I've <laughs> gotta hit some shots for you. So, Let's go through all those points. Okay. Set up, getting the hand slightly more below the chin, making sure you've got the right distance away. So draw that line from the chin down to the hand that should hit your right hand. Then being able to lift your toes up at address. 
So you're putting your positioning, not so, so, not so much into the back of your foot, but more in the middle of your foot, yeah. not too much in your, to your toes. Going back in the swing, driving that weight and pushing that weight into the right. You can continue. I'm going <laughs> to talk about it. Moving that weight into the back right foot. And if we show that one there, Dan, moving the weight into the back right foot. Control the balance and think of that very smooth tempo where you can control your balance. Actually, no, smooth is the wrong word. Think of that tempo where you can control your balance. Yeah. As you swing down, you're moving your weight into your left heel and then you can then finish. Follow through and finish in that heel. Second it on. You have to do it now, yeah. Ugh. All this practice, all this <laughs> talk, Dan. Can he talk? Can he walk the walk? I guess we'll see right now, eh? One second, we're not in, not in GC2. We've got to see the goal shot. Otherwise, we'll just do, oh, yes, what a brilliant golf shot. <laughs> this is real deal. <laughs> oh, Dan, that's great. Middle of the green. You've left yourself an easy birdie put into this par five. What a player. <laughs> and that's genuine. That we've not just made that up. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do subscribe. Subscribe to myself, subscribe to Dan. Uh, we'll create some cool content together. If you've got any more ideas of what you want to see in the golf uh, technique element of this uh, video series, please do comment below. Hopefully, that's going to help you become more consistent. If it does, please do let us know. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.